On the 19th of March 2020, 29-year-old Abalahi Mamamood, known locally as Ninja, walked into Bagel Brothers Takeaway in Enfield to order food. From reports, it isn't exactly clear if he was in there with anyone that he knew, and all we do know is that in the shop itself, along with him, were four other men and two members of staff. What Abalahi didn't know though was that as he was waiting for his food, a man was approaching the store, ready to murder him. Driving along Hereford Road in a Toyota Argo, 20-year-old shooter Khalid Hogan and his driver had somehow been passed information about Abalahi's whereabouts, so they made their way towards the takeaway. In those few moments whilst he was waiting for his food, Khalid is thought to have arrived at the takeaway, exited his car briskly and with purpose, as described by the prosecution, and with his hood up, he walked towards Bagel Brothers, carrying a loaded 9mm Makarov self-loading pistol. Without hesitation, as soon as Khalid Hogan entered the takeaway, he opened fire. He would go on to fire his gun four times towards the area that Abalahi and a number of other men were standing. Believe it or not though, by good fortune, all four shots were missed. Even the owner of the restaurant had been there at the time of the shooting and within seconds had made his way to the rear opening the exit, which led to a large yard with a concrete wall. Abalahi and the other men who were in the store followed soon after, but with one thing on his mind, murder, Khalid pursued after, and the small chase was on. With the gunman now in pursuit, Abalahi began to scale over the concrete wall to escape, but as he did, the gunman opened fire once again, firing at least one more shot, and this time, unfortunately, Abalahi was hit. The bullet was said to have gone through Abalahi's arm and into his forehead as he was climbing over the wall. Somehow though, he managed to scale over a second concrete wall, even after being shot in his head. The second wall had led onto a patio floor at the rear of a barber's shop, but ultimately after scaling that wall, he fell straight onto the floor below where he laid motionless. The gunman, Khalid, raised himself up to peer over the first wall and pointed his gun at the retreating men, but for whatever reason, decided not to fire again. Then he retraced his footsteps and left through the front door of Bagel Brothers. For Abalahi, he didn't die at the scene and was rushed to hospital, but despite the best efforts of medical staff, he would be pronounced dead later on that same day. During the investigation, detectives believed that this was a quote, planned shooting, and that Abalahi was the intended target, with information of his location being leaked to the shooter. Planned so much that gunman Khalid Hogan had made a call to his friend Alex Weeks for around 56 minutes, covering the time of the killing. He did this to create a false alibi so he could say he was on the phone to his friend at the time of the shooting, but as the police investigation continued, they seen straight through this, and in May of 2020, they would both go on to be charged. Recently in court, Khalid Hogan was jailed to life with the minimum term of 27 years, whilst Alex was handed a 20-month sentence. But because he's already served 268 days in custody, this will be taken off that amount. Now, I'm unsure how his location had been leaked to the shooter, because going to the bagel shop wouldn't necessarily be a reoccurring thing. What I mean by this is that Abalahi wouldn't have, say, gone to Bagel Brothers every day at around 12pm from the information that we know, but if he did do this, this could be one of the reasons as to how his location had been given away, someone might have been keeping tabs. Now, not much information is known in regards to the police investigation, but I'm guessing everyone in the shop would have been interviewed, and if they suspected that someone in the shop had set him up, I'm pretty sure the police would have checked that line of inquiry, but from what we know, no one else has been charged for setting up the killing, so I am a bit confused as to how his location was actually leaked. Now, the driver in this situation is also yet to be identified, but if we do get updates coming out of this story, as always, I'm going to keep you guys posted on this one. Now, I do want to take this time out just to say rest in peace to Abalahi, and I do want to send my condolences over to his family and friends. But give the video a like for more crime related content like this and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. It's been me, Ape Hancho, and I'll see you in the next one.